G'day, welcome back to the channel. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. Today I'm going to be doing a strip down and rebuild of an Asus F555L laptop. Let's get started. So with COVID-19, this has brought us isolation and homeschooling. Now this has put a lot of mileage on the wife's laptop, which in turn has killed the Wi-Fi chip. So rather than continuing to run a 20 meter ethernet cable through the middle of the house, I decided I might as well pull it apart and change the chip. I mean, I've got a couple left laying around from previous jobs. So I couldn't find a decent video online that showed how to get to the Wi-Fi chip on this particular laptop. So I figured, why not? Let's throw a video together and show you guys how it's done. It's a pretty self-explanatory process, so I'm just gonna run the video and run you guys through it. Uh, I've got two Wi-Fi chips here. One is a dual band Intel 2.4 and 5 gigahertz chip. The other is a Realtek 2.4 single band. So naturally I want to try and use the dual band if we can. Now there's 10 screws around the outside of this case that you need to remove to get it apart. It's pretty much one of the last in the era of having to remove screws from the case. Most of them nowadays are just clipped or glued together. I like to lay the screws out in the same order that I remove them in. It makes it easier putting them back in. There is various size screws on this particular laptop. Now there is also a screw underneath the door for the RAM slot. I don't believe you need to take this off, but I did anyway for the point of the video. Once you've got it apart, you want to get yourself either a pry tool or some guitar picks. If you don't have any guitar picks, perhaps take a muso friend of yours for a drive in the car and then look down the side of the seat once they get out of the car because there'll probably be a handful of them there. Now seriously, these things are pretty durable. They're fairly cheap. I do not recommend using any metallic objects to get these things apart as you can damage some of the material inside. Once you've got the three sides undone, don't worry about the hinge side just yet. Flip open the, the monitor and lift up the keyboard. Remove the retaining clips for the ribbon cards and ever wonder what happened to that coffee you spilt in your laptop? Yeah, there it is. This is a little bit grubby on the inside. Um, I'm gonna give the fan a bit of a dust, but for now, let's just remove the three screws retaining the SATA interface card. Once we've done that, we can lift up the retaining clip for the ribbon cable on this device, pull the ribbon cable up, and we can go and slot that SATA interface card out the way. Then we're gonna go ahead and just continue removing all the screws around the outside of the motherboard. Don't worry about any of the screws on the inside of the motherboard. These are going to be for things on the other side. You don't want to get to these. Yeah, that screw gave me a bit of trouble. So we'll come back to that with a different screwdriver. But just continue working your way around the outside. Also, uh, the screws on the battery so you can remove the battery out of the way. We'll get to that one in a minute. Once you've got those screws for the battery out of the way, you can literally just lift the battery, slot it out of the cradle for it and yeah the struggle is real on this one yep nearly stripped the screw but I did manage to get it undone so just had to use a better screwdriver something with a bit more torque on it really gave me some grief there I didn't think I was going to get it apart so get that battery out of the way remove the screw for the optical drive and yep one more screw for the motherboard there just tucked away hiding in that top corner Flip over the motherboard once you get it loose from the casing and that will give us access to the Wi-Fi chip. So we just need to remove the screw for the retainer of the chip and then we can pull that out of the way and flip it over and we can remove the antenna cable. Once we've got the antenna cable off, we can start to the process in reverse. So I did give the laptop a good clean out and blew out that fan. We can clip that Wi-Fi card back onto the antenna cable, make sure that you are plugging it into the main side. It may vary depending on the brand of your Wi-Fi card. Don't just assume that I removed it from the right, so I'm gonna clip it back on on the right and go ahead and put the screw back in there. Lay the motherboard back in place, put the battery back in and go ahead and put all those screws back in around the outside of the motherboard. And yes, you can see that fan is looking much cleaner. You wanna get all the dust out of there if you can. Work your way around. Once again, as I said before, I like to lay the screws out in the same order that I uh, remove them. It makes it easier to put everything back in. You don't put the wrong screw in the wrong place. Put that SATA interface back in, slot the ribbon cable back in for the hard drive, and go ahead and put those screws back in, holding that down. 
Once you've done that, you can get your keyboard back in place and we can start to put those ribbon cables in. Now, make sure that the retaining clips are lifted up and go ahead and clip those in. Some secret screw stuff going on underneath the keyboard here. You may need to use a screwdriver to push the ribbon back in for the smaller cable. You'll see what I mean when you've got it there. Don't, don't use it on any of the uh, chipboards or anything like that, just on the little clip. Go ahead and soft clip the keyboard back in place and turn it on and give it a test. We want to make sure the monitor works, the keyboard works, touchpad works, and also obviously log into your Wi-Fi because what's the point of doing this process if the Wi-Fi doesn't work? So I've tested this, it all works okay. We can go ahead and we can do the same in reverse here. Just put all those screws back in on the underside and put the RAM door back on if you did bother to remove it. And I did confirm, no, you don't need to remove it, but I did anyway. Flip it over, turn it on, and once again, test everything is working and A-OK. -okay. Well guys, I hope this has helped you with your repairs on your Asus F555 L series laptops and obviously other variations similar to that. If it has guys, throw us a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.